Okay, let's talk about complex fractions and how to deal with them. So by definition, a complex uh, fraction is simply, well, here's an example of one. If you kind of look at it, maybe you can kind of you know, think to yourself, what does this mean, complex fraction? Well, uh, essentially, a complex fraction is nothing more than a, a fraction where the numerator and denominator um, are themselves fractions. So we have fractions amongst fractions amongst fractions. So it could be a little complex, but we're going to go ahead and dispel with all the complexity and confusion. And of course, this can be uh, con uh, confusing. We'll do this particular problem, and then we'll look at a few more examples. So you have the skills to deal with complex fractions. Okay, but before we uh, get into this, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. Also, middle and high school math teacher, and over many years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the most robust, comprehensive, video-based math help programs there is. So uh, if you need to take a math uh, course, or if you need uh, help with the math course that you're currently in, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program. I think you'll find it very beneficial, but I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. Now, another thing that I'm a big stickler about, and it's only because I've been teaching math for many, 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 many years, is notes. Okay, You need to be taking absolutely great notes. right? Just so you know, there's a direct correlation to how strong your notes are to how well you learn math and you're great. Okay, so you need, really need to um, look at your notes and ask yourself, hey, do you, you know, are you producing the best pair of notes that you can uh, for your math class? Now, I have some uh, videos uh, in one of my playlists on uh, motivation and math tips on note taking. Strongly suggest you take a look at that if your notes are not where they need to be. But uh, I also offer notes. Uh, so I'm going to leave a link to uh, my notes in the description of this video. So that would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry for now. But they're very, very comprehensive. The bottom line is you need something to study from. Okay, so notes, you know, are uh, you know kind of summarize what the teacher is teaching you. But uh, with that being said, let's get into complex fractions. All right, let's go ahead and do this problem here first. So here again is a complex fraction. It's complex because we have a fraction as a numerator and a fraction as a denominator. Okay, so this particular problem, I mean, if we had like a regular fraction, let's say four sevenths, there's really nothing much to do here, right? It's fully reduced and there's you know nothing going on, right? Now, this guy, all right. What we have to kind of decipher what this means. Well, we're having, let's just read it, okay? This is three fourths divided by one fifth. Okay, this is what this is saying, right? I'll, just, I'll say that again. So this is three fourths, all right? Let's write that out this way. Divided by, that's this little bar right here, right? One fifth, okay? So that's all you have to do. Uh, to work with these particular complex fractions is just kind of decipher, kind of read it out loud. Three-fourths divided by one-fifth. Now we write it in a more, kind of say, traditional, easier to understand format. Okay, so now three-fourths divided by one-fifth. Of course, I know you are an expert in fractions, right? So I have to um, turn this division problem into a multiplication problem by flipping this fraction. So this is going to be three-fourths times five over one. And now I can simply just go ahead and multiply the numerators and denominators. I get up and I get uh, 15 fourths, okay? Now, at this point, if you've been following my other uh, videos, um, you're pretty much done, okay? You have, you have to ask yourself, is this fraction fully reduced? If it's reduced, fully simplified, okay, then I would give you full credit. I've um, uh, stressed uh, in other videos that you don't want to turn this into mixed numbers. In other words, you don't want to go and go, oh, 4 goes into 15, 3 times, that's 12, da, 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 and write this as a mixed number. You need to know how to do that, but I would not um, suggest that you do this involuntarily. You just go well, voluntarily, okay? You just kind of just do it and, hey, teacher, look, here's my answer as a mixed number because I've seen a high percentage of students make get this problem, like get a problem like this correct, 
then turn into a mixed number and, and do this incorrectly and then give the teacher the wrong answer. So you end up with a lot of like sad faces with that kind of situation. Just make sure that your, your improper fraction is fully reduced um, and most teachers should be okay with that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some more examples with uh, mixed or complex fractions. Uh, let's say something like this. Now I'm just making something up. Uh, let's say like that, right? We'll throw in some uh, positive and negative numbers in here just for good order. So uh, let's see here. Actually, I'm not done. Uh, let's do one more thing, right? I didn't make this a uh, fully complex. I wasn't complex enough. That was more of a basic fraction. Okay, let's say something like this. All right, this is fun. Okay, this is real fun. All right, so how do I deal with this? Well, okay, just basically what I uh, said in the previous problem. Okay, you're going to have to simplify this numerator. Okay, then we're going to have to write it as this numerator being divided by this denominator. Okay, so if you think you could do that, I would certainly encourage you to simplify the problem, okay, the complex fraction. And uh, if you don't want to see the solution just yet, maybe we'll go ahead and pause the video. So I'm going to go ahead and do this now. All right, so again, uh, this is going to be the numerator, all right, being divided by the denominator. But we need to get this numerator, you know, uh, cleaned up. And then the denominator down here, of course, we can see that's going to be 8. All right. And then we'll go ahead and do the actual multiplication. We'll uh, turn this in from uh, turn this uh, from division into multiplication and, and fully answer this problem. So let's just take it one step at a time. And let's see here. So the numerator is going to be uh, one third. And we can write it like this. We'll just do when you're doing math, you just take things one step at a time. So 1 plus 3, of course, is 4 divided by 8 minus 12 is negative 4. So you want to write that like so over, oops, oh, I think I had, let me just, re, sorry about that. I erased the denominator too soon. I'm just backing up here. Oh, it was 5 plus 3. Sorry about that. 5 plus 3. Didn't want to do that. Okay, so back here. This is going to be 1 plus 3 is 4 over 8 minus 12 is negative 4. Yeah, don't erase your denominator. That's not good. Then we definitely won't get this problem uh, correct. Okay, so now when you're doing math, again, you don't want to do all this in your head and just have your answer. Just take it one controlled step at a time. So here I can clearly see what's going on with the numerator. That looks good. And then I could take one step here with the denominator 5 plus 3. That's 8. Okay. So let's just keep simplifying here uh, the numerator. 4 divided by negative 4 is what? That's negative 1. And then we have negative 1 divided by 8. And in this uh, situation, there's nothing to do. Okay. So you can have a complex fraction where you don't have to do any division if it just simplifies down like this. Now I'm kind of making these problems up on the fly. But um, again, uh, don't be... Con overly confused, hopefully, with complex fractions. You're just following the same steps as you are with regular fractions and just seeing where the problem leads you. Now, let's do one more problem. And this time, we'll uh, use some variables. All right. Let me erase this. Let's see. Uh, okay. How about this one? Okay. So we have... A over B divided by C plus D divided by Y. Now, if your math teacher was really nice, they might put these in um, little grouping symbols, like so, to clearly define what's going on. But in complex fractions, you, know, you will see, uh, or generally you will see this main uh, division bar that separates the numerator and uh, denominator as longer, okay? So you you can kind of see, oh, this is being defined as the numerator, and this is the denominator. So this fraction down here is acting as the denominator, but if you don't have brackets or grouping symbols, it's probably, it's a good idea to put them in, okay? Because now it just defines clearly what's going on in terms of the numerator and denominator. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So this is going to be A divided by B, 
okay, A divided by B, or A over B, this is all going to be divided by C plus D, C plus D over Y, okay? So uh, we've got to make sure that we uh, correctly go from this format into this format, all right? Okay, so just because we're dealing with variables doesn't mean that um, we take different steps in terms of fractions here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this into multiplication and flip this guy. So this is going to be A over B times Y. I'm taking a reciprocal, okay, of this guy, uh, Y over C plus D, okay? So this is going to be A times Y, all right, A times Y. Now here is where you have to be very careful. This is going to be B times C plus D, okay? Now, what would read the result down there? I bet you, and why do I bet you? Because I've seen, I don't know, how many tens of thousands of quiz and test grades, 50% or more of you would say, okay, B times C plus D, uh, this right here, B times this C plus D, right? Because I got to get my denominator, is going to be equal to B, C plus D, okay? How many of you out there put this as your denominator, okay? If you did, you would have a sad face when you got your little quiz or test back for me, okay? That's not the answer, okay? So oftentimes, grouping symbols will not be um, in the problem, okay? C plus D is a sum. So anytime you see a sum or a difference, you want to put parentheses. So this is going to really be B times C plus D, okay? But if you're going to use um, or fully simplify this using the distributive property, the final answer would be A over Y, then this is going to be B times C plus B times D. That should be the denominator. And if you got this right, then that's impressive, okay? Because so many students um, confuse the, the distributive property. It's easy to make that mistake, especially when you haven't grasped uh, the um, how to use and insert parentheses and brackets just to emphasize, you know, what is a group. These are called grouping symbols, like C plus D is a group. We have to consider that as just one entity, one sum, or let's say if that was a subtraction sign, one difference. Okay, so we looked at some uh, uh, few examples, right? You're going to definitely going to encounter complex fractions, okay? Just a, uh, you know, just a fact, you know, the more you, um, you know, study mathematics, you're going to you see these guys, but don't, you know, at first time, you know, first glance, they are a little bit intimidating, but you obviously got to practice this stuff, right? And the thing is this, until you can, um, you know, you're not going to be able to handle complex fractions unless you understand just basic fraction operations, you know, in the first place, which would include what, you know, do you know how to add? Do you know how to subtract? Do you know how to multiply? Do you know how to divide? Do you know how to find the LCD? And this gives a lot of students a lot of trouble finding the lowest common denominator. They're like, this confuses a lot of students. Do you know how to reduce? Do you know how to work with positive and negative numbers, et cetera? So the world of fractions is just much more than just, um, you know, doing basic fraction operations. you got to kind of pull this stuff all together. Okay, so again, the, the, the main point here is it's nice that you understand this now if you do. But if you don't practice this, it's not going to stick. Okay, got to practice. All right. So if you enjoyed this video, I certainly would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos that could help you out on my channel. And I'm posting stuff all the time. And, uh, of course, lastly, if you really want my best work, full comprehensive uh, math help program or notes, you can find the links to those in the description of this video. So I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.